In this part of the print and cut segment, we will cover how to create registration marks using Cutting Master 4. While we will be using Adobe Illustrator with the Cutting Master 4 plugin, the steps are generally the same with Corel Draw and with GraphTech Studio applications. If you use a different application, the steps are likely the same, but it is best to check your software manual. You'll notice that we already have the cut line established here. We just need to place registration marks. Cutting Master 4 can do that for us. Let's open the registration mark generator by clicking on the file pull-down menu, hovering your mouse over the Cutting Master 4, and selecting registration marks. This opens the Cutting Master 4 registration mark generator. This window is where we can set the parameters for the registration marks and barcodes. But in this segment, we will just cover placing registration marks, and then later show how to cut the design. The registration mark generator will place registration marks directly onto our design and at the same time create their own separate layers within Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. In this pull down menu above is a list of registration mark types. You'll notice that they have two types, type 1 and type 2. There is also the choice of using two to four registration marks. This depends on you and your needs. In this lesson, we will use four registration marks. To see the differences between registration mark types, let's first choose Type 1. Click OK. And four Type 1 registration marks are placed on the four corners outside the design. If you examine them closely, they are like little L-shaped brackets, if you will, where the corners are pointed inwards toward the graphic. Now let's return to the registration mark generator and look at what Type 2 looks like. Once again, click on the File pull-down menu, hover over Cutting Master 4, and select Registration Marks. This time, we'll select Type 2, and then click OK. Notice that the registration marks are different in that the corners are now facing outward. At this point, you may be wondering what's the difference between using either Type 1 or Type 2. The difference is that Type 1 saves media by reducing the amount of space needed between the registration marks and the design. In other words, they can be placed closer, while Type 2 requires more space between the two. As to which type to use, it depends on what your needs are. While we will be using Type 2 in this demonstration, the processes are basically the same. Let's go back again to the registration mark generator and look at some of the other options. The first option under Units is the margin. This is the difference between the design and the registration marks. The next value determines the stroke thickness of the registration marks. The value shown below determines the stem length of the registration marks. Keep in mind that the thicker and longer the registration marks, the easier for the registration mark scanner to find them. This is the reason these default values always set to the highest values. Generally, there is a limited amount of control as to the locations of the registration marks. If you'd like to determine the locations of the registration marks, you have this option, Convert Rectangle. When enabled, Cutting Master 4 will use a rectangle's corners for the placement of the registration marks. To demonstrate, let's return to Adobe Illustrator and draw a simple rectangle. We'll adjust the size so that it is closer to the graphic. And return to the registration mark generator. Here we'll enable convert rectangle and click OK. Now the rectangle has been removed and registration marks have been placed in the same spot as the corners of the rectangle. Let's undo this. Return to the generator and review some other options. This option, relative to page, when enabled, will place the registration marks relative to the artboard. In other words, it places the registration marks at each corner of the artboard. Let's enable it and click OK. To make sure they are there, we can expand the artboard so we can verify that the registration marks have indeed been placed on the corners of the artboard. 
Let's go ahead and go back to create normal registration marks. Now the design is ready to print. But before this is done, the cut line layer should be turned off since we don't want the cut line to print with the design. Let's go ahead and send it to the printer. Once the print is complete, always make sure that the cut layer is enabled. Next, let's open up the cut plot window. The first step is to make sure only the cut line is sent to the cutter. This is done in the Layers tab. Here we can disable the print layer. At this point, let's load the print onto the cutter, making sure that the orientation is correct and it is loaded straight. As a tip to loading print straight, use the registration marks to feel the edge of the front crease on the cutter. Finally, click Send to send the job to the cutter. Here we are asked to position the blade holder tip over the first registration mark closest to the control panel. So using the arrow keys, position the blade holder's tip so that it is directly over the first registration mark you see in this diagram. As a tip, use the slow key to position the tool head. Once it is positioned, click OK. The cutter will then scan the first registration mark and then continue to find the rest of the registration marks. It will then cut the contour cut line. And here's the final result. 